For this given question, we have this ball that is attached to a string of length L and it swings in horizontal circle and the string makes an angle of theta with the vertical. And finally, the tension is defined as T. And we are going to draw the free body diagram and determine mass, speed and frequency. For this question, I'm going to be drawing free body diagram. And I'm going to start it with force of gravity. And we also call it as gravitational force. And it can be shown as W and Mg as well. And when it comes to the tension force, tension force is always right along the string. And this is the answer to this question. So always keep in your mind that if you want to show the X and Y components of the tension, this is not the right place. If you do, you'll lose points. For this part, we are going to determine the mass of the ball. And let's focus on the left side for now. So we have this Ty, Tx and Mg. And you already know what Ty and Tx are, right? So these are the components of the T force. So let's take a look at this closely. On the y axis, I have Ty and Mg and they are in opposite directions. So let's remember the vector addition. If there are two forces that are in opposite directions, there will be subtraction actually. And let's take a look at the x-axis. There is only one force. So the net force along the x-axis is going to be Tx. So this is going to cause acceleration. And that's what we're going to see in the next section. I'm just going to leave it there for now. So when it comes back to this one, Ty and Mg, if these two forces are the same in magnitude, then when we add them together, it's going to give us zero. So net force Fy is going to be zero if I add these two together. So let's remember the case we have. So we had this ball doing or swinging in a horizontal circle, right? And the plane wasn't, wasn't changing. So it moves along the same plane. It doesn't go up or down. So here's the thing. What we can say is that change in position is zero so this object is not moving along the y-axis so what does it tell us what does it remind us so let's go back to the newton's first law it states that if there is no motion then if there is no motion then there is no external force right so the external force is going to be zero along the y-axis. So this is our starting point. Net force along the y-axis is zero. So the rest is easy. Uh, as you know, we always have a reference point and coordinate system. And if we take the up direction as positive and down direction as negative, then this addition is going to become or is going to turn into Ty minus Mg and that equals zero. And from there, we are going to get Ty equals Mg. And that's going to give us M equals Ty times G. So what is next? Ty wasn't defined in the question. We do need, we do need to define Ty. So let's go back to the original question now. So this is the string, and this is the vertical, and this is the angle theta. So right here we have the ball, right? Let me change the color. And this is the tension force. So this is the x component of the tension, and this is the y component of the tension. Just remember, if this angle is... if uh, if this angle is theta right here, then this angle is going to be theta as well. So let me just draw that. Uh, here we go. 
So as you see, Tx is the opposite side. And Ty is the adjacent side to this angle. So what it means is Ty equals T times cosine theta and Tx equals T times sine theta. So that's what we get out of this. Let me just put it here as a note. I'm going to use this side right here. I'm going to say adjacent for cosine and opposite for sine. So that's what we do all the time. After you get Ty as T cosine theta, you just plug that value in in here and after that what you get is t times cosine theta is t times cosine theta over g is m for this section we are going to determine the speed of the ball and from the previous question we saw that ty cancel mg out so the only force left for the net force was Tx. So if we are going to take a look at the top view, what we are going to see is that this Tx force is always to the center. So it's basically a, a center seeking force. So if we are going to write the equation for this one, here's what's going to happen. So net force equals m times a, right? So since this force is to the center and the object is doing circular motion, then the acceleration will be centripetal acceleration and the force will become centripetal force. So it's still net force and the only force we have left is Tx. So Tx is going to be equal to m times v squared over r. Let's remember Tx from the uh, previous question. So Tx is T sine theta. So let's uh, put, it in, put that in there. I'm going to choose this one. T sine theta equals m. We already figured out m. And m is... T cosine theta over G and V squared over R. So can we figure out R? Because R is not given in the question. So we need to write it in terms of L and theta. So let's take a look at this. So this is what we have. This is the L, the length of the string. And right here, this is R, right? And this is the angle theta. So let's remember, sine theta is opposite side over hypotenuse. Opposite side is R, and hypotenuse is L. Since we are looking for R, R from here becomes L times sine theta. So let's put Let's plug it in here, and if you put it right there, L sine theta, and from here, uh, we can uh, figure out the speed, and speed is going to become square root of G times L times sine theta theta tangent theta so this is the solution for this section we are going to determine the frequency of revolution of the ball so the simplest formula for speed is distance over time and speed is given as constant for this question so if you focus on one revolution it wouldn't change the result since the speed is constant. So, let's move on. 
distance is 2 pi r for one revolution and the time for one revolution is t period so period is time for one revolution so speed becomes 2 pi r over period and just remember period is 1 over f if you plug that in in the formula uh, what we're gonna have is that v equals 2 pi r f and from there f becomes v over 2 pi r and from there when we plug it plug in the givens and uh, the, the values we found we are going to get this result here is the final question when the string breaks as the ball swings in its circular path the ball is going to have horizontal initial velocity but later it's gonna follow a, a parabolic path thank you for watching